my nose right in there. Red splattered everywhere. It's like a Halloween movie in this house when I'm cooking with tomatoes. Boiling royally. Rolling boiling. It has come to a rolling boil. <laughs> it's just that kind of day today, my friends. Hello, my name is Crystal. Welcome to our channel. I am in my basement. It's morning time. Steve's at work. <laughs> it's December and it's cold. I am starting our wood stove down here. He usually leaves a couple coals for me in the morning, which is nice because then I can just throw a little piece of paper in there and it will kick it off. I'm having a tough time this morning getting it to go, but I'm really excited. It's December and I'm going to be canning up some pasta sauce today. Over the past few days, I have been defrosting all of the Roma tomatoes that I had in my deep freezer and there was a lot of bags of Roma tomatoes. And then some of the bags of sliced roast tomatoes, once they defrosted, I just ended up giving them to the chickens because they really could use that little boost of something fresh out there and I was just not going to be able to get to doing anything with them, which I don't like doing, but it's really nice to know that I'm giving them to our animals who are in turn giving us lovely eggs, so it's fine. I've been canning, you know, plain tomato sauce and tomato juice and diced tomatoes and all the plain tomatoes, but today I'm actually going to be doing seasoned pasta sauce and I haven't had pre-made pasta sauce in our pantry other than the pizza sauce that I've made up. I've done a couple batches of pizza sauce which has been nice but having some ready-made pasta sauce will be even nicer. All right I finally got the fire going here. I'm gonna put another piece of wood on it. Right now the tomatoes are in my fridge upstairs. They're already cooked down and they're ready to go to turn into pasta sauce. Let me show you the process of what I did to get it to the point that it is now and then we'll be back in the kitchen. We are in my basement today and this is our chest freezer and I am here to get the tomatoes. Got my laundry basket and we're gonna bring these upstairs. I'm gonna need a bigger basket. I'm gonna have to make two trips. Okay, so I have some tomatoes in the sink. I have to leave the other side open for dishes and stuff. About 13 bags of frozen tomatoes here that I'm gonna let defrost overnight and we will be back. So it's the next morning and these have been sitting in the sink. They're pretty defrosted, these ones are all soft. Some of them are still a little frozen, but that's okay, I'm still gonna get the skins off of them and get them into our roaster. If they're frozen a little bit and the skins don't come off, they'll come off once they've cooked down a little bit. I'm gonna go ahead and get the skins off of the tomatoes and any of the liquid that's drained out into the bag. We're gonna leave the liquid that's in the bag out of the tomatoes when we put, move them over to the roaster. This is where they are going. It's an 18 quart roaster. I just used it the other day to make a turkey and I've used it in the past to roast on the tomatoes and it really is like the best method when you're cooking tomatoes down to process them. Freezing the tomatoes is, there's so many benefits to it. One, it preserves them right away when you're overwhelmed with the garden and Two, when you defrost them, the skins just slip right off of the tomato, but it also separates all that water that's in there. I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a lot of liquid in here that I don't have to cook down anymore because it's separated itself in the bag. You can squeeze the water out of them too a little bit. This is what I'm left with, all of this water that I don't have to worry about cooking down. One thing I really want to note about this whole freezing process is I did core the tomatoes before I freeze them. So all I have to do is pull the skins off when they as they defrost. It's really easy. I don't have to cut them up or anything like that. Here is what the tomatoes look like and I'm just gonna go ahead and put them right into the roaster and then get all of these bags and the bags in here. And here's the last of them. Now, some of them, you know, the skins, because they're frozen, I'm just gonna have to pull off the skins as they cook down. As these were sitting in here, a lot of the water started pooling on one side, so I drained a lot of the water that was still in here out, 
And now I'm going to turn the roaster on. Here's the dial for the temperature for the roaster. And I'm gonna turn it up to 325. And I've already done this process this year and made plain tomato sauce unseasoned. And this, it worked out really good. It cooked down and I was able to drain off some of the water a little at a time if it looked like it was pooling on top. So they're just gonna sit here on my counter like this today and cook down. I was in my basement looking to see how many bags of diced jalapenos I have. And I found another bag of Roma tomatoes. So I'm gonna defrost these as fast as I can in the sink and get those added to the roaster. Okay, so these have been cooking down. I added that other bag. Uh, frozen tomatoes that I found in the basement freezer. I defrosted them very quickly using just a warm bath of water and just changing out the water a couple of times until they were defrosted enough that I could get the skins off. I added them to here and they've been cooking down. This has been in here all day today. I actually had turned down the temperature to about 300 at one point because it was a little too hot in here. I am at the stage where I'm going to use my hand blender and blend it all up into a thick sauce. And then I'm gonna cook it down just a little bit more and then I'll probably store it in the refrigerator until tomorrow. <laughs> It's actually a really great consistency for a pasta sauce, so I'm pretty happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and let this cool off, and then I'm gonna move it into a dish to keep it in the refrigerator overnight. All right, so I have all of the tomato sauce that I roasted and blended up. It's been in my freezer. No. <laughs> it's been in the refrigerator for, this is day two, I think, because I didn't have time yesterday. We had a lot of appointments, so I didn't have time to can it up yesterday, so I'm canning it up today. The book I'm using is this one. It's the Ball Blue Book Guide to Preserving, and the recipe I am using is the tomato sauce recipe on page 35 here. So, let's see. The recipe is here, and the Italian spice blend is here. The first thing I'm going to do is get this tomato sauce back on the stove, get it brought up to a boil and heat it through. And hopefully I can get it all in one pot, but I think it's going to be tight. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do that. All right. Oh man, I am so messy when I cook with tomatoes. All right. Red splattered everywhere. It's like a Halloween movie in this house when I'm cooking with tomatoes. I got all of those bags of tomatoes into my pot. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring this up to. I don't want to burn it, so I'm gonna put it over a medium low heat just to slowly bring it up because it is cold sauce here. Slowly bring it up to a warm temperature and then bring it up to a boil. Now while that is going, we're gonna go ahead and make the spice blend. You know what I didn't do this year? I didn't dry any of my basil and I'm a little mad at myself for it. Time got away from me and the next thing I know they're all, the plants were dead outside. I think I'm gonna make up my own spice blend but kind of use theirs in this ball book here as a guide. I'm going to start with the Italian seasoning blend, and this has organic oregano, basil, marjoram, sage, and garlic in it, and it smells really, really good. So I'm going to use some of that. Two and a half tablespoons of that. I'm going to add about three and a half tablespoons of oregano. I'm going to do three teaspoons of red thyme. Two teaspoons of red pepper flakes and about four teaspoons of garlic powder. It smells pretty good like that, but I'm gonna add some more dried basil. This is basil we grew from our garden last year. It's <laughs> powerful. <laughs> I stuck my nose right in there. It's good. That smells really good. Okay, so I got the water bath canner heating up and then this is this is slowly coming up to temperature. You do not want to burn it. 
so I'm just taking my time and slowly getting it heated through. It's been nice because I haven't had to use any tomato paste this year as a thickener. The roaster, I used it last year. I pretty much just dumped the frozen tomatoes into the roaster and it was still really watery. By doing the method that I did the past few times of draining the water out before I moved the tomatoes over to the roaster, I haven't had to use tomato paste at all as a thickener. And that's that's been really good. So I'm going to wait for this to heat up, wait for this to heat up, and then we'll get our jars ready. Sounds good. All right, so this is coming up to a very slight boil and it's definitely heated through. The water bath canner is for sure warm. So I'm gonna move some of these jars over. I am using ball, regular mouth, quart size jars for the tomato sauce let them warm up next to the stove because the rack that's in here isn't letting me it doesn't sit high enough so I'm gonna have to find another rack for my water bath canner this is, this is a lot of jars I feel like I'm being a little ambitious with the amount of jars I have but that's okay I'm now gonna wash some lids I need three nine lids I need nine bands the sauce still has some seeds in it, but it's not, it doesn't bother me. There's not a lot. Um, many of them got pureed up with the hand mixer. So it's, it's not gonna ruin the consistency of the sauce in any way, so it doesn't bother me. The next step that I'm gonna do is the get the jars sort of prepped. I'm not gonna do all nine jars because I don't know if I have enough sauce for that but I'm gonna start with just a few at a time. So we're gonna be adding two tablespoons of bottled lemon juice to each quart size jar. I'm gonna add three teaspoons of the seasoning mix in each quart size jar. So the sauce is boiling pretty good here. It's nice and heated through. And I'm gonna go ahead and get a spoon ready. I'm gonna ladle the sauce in. I'm gonna be leaving a half of an inch of headspace between the sauce and the rim of the jar. And the next step is to get the air bubbles out. And this is kind of a thick sauce, so there's a lot of air bubbles. Now we're gonna clean the jars because I'm super messy. Distilled white vinegar on a rag that does not produce any lint. And I'm gonna go around and clean these jars off. I'm gonna take a clean regular mouth lid, because these are regular mouth jars. Place it on the top of each jar. Grab some rings and do finger tight. Finger tight is just the tips of our fingers on the ring and right on the jar. Just finger tight, just like that. And I'm gonna move these over to the water breath canner that is preheated, but not super boiling or anything like that yet. I'm gonna try and fit four more in the water bath canner, and I'm gonna quickly go through these. I got five quart size jars in here comfortably. I probably could squeeze in a couple more. I'm not gonna do that because I still have some more to do and I'm gonna have to do another batch anyway. So rather than squeezing them in, I'm just gonna do the five that are in here. I'm going to lower these into the water bath canner. Whoa, monkeys. There's a lot of water in here. I think I put too much <laughs> water. So I'm gonna take some out. I'm going to put the lid back on. Bring it back up to a boil. I have just enough in here 
like maybe to cover a whole pizza. Just keep this in the refrigerator and use it tomorrow on pizzas. The water bath canner is boiling royally. Rolling boiling. It has come to a rolling boil. <laughs> it's just that kind of day today, my friends. And so I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. And I'm gonna turn the burner down just a little bit so that it's not so aggressively shooting water out the side. And we will be back when the timer is going off. And I'm gonna turn that off. And I'm gonna turn the burner off as well. Remove the lid to the water bath canner. Try and remember to tilt it away from your face because it's a whole lot of steam coming at you and you don't want that. So. Now I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. And just kind of let this cool off a little bit before we move these very hot jars to the countertop. So we'll wait about five minutes. Now that timer is going off, so I'm going to turn that off. And here's the exciting part. I get to take the jars out of the water earth canner and move them to a towel. You don't want to put hot jars right on the counter. The shock of the cool temperature of the counter might cause the jars to crack and the drastic change in temperature can cause the a sauce in particular can cause it to siphon out of the jars and we don't want that either. I'm going to raise the rack out of the water earth canner first. Alright, so I canned up eight jars of pasta sauce. I'm so excited. We grew all of those Roma tomatoes. I'll put the varieties down in the description of what seeds they were. Here's how the jars look. They came out really nice, I think, and the one thing I'm a little concerned about that I wish I had done was shake up the seasoning into the lemon juice a little bit so it wouldn't be so clumpy inside the sauce, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to wait for them to cool and seal, and then I'll probably just give them a good shake before I put them in the pantry to disperse some of the, the seasoning that's inside the jar. But that'll do it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and we will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye.